All right, so welcome to another episode of the Grand House Podcast. I am your host, Edwin Cabrera. As you can see, I am in my bunker, hoarding all the toilet paper, selling it for double the price. Hit me up if you want it. Krita, how you doing, man? Doing okay, man. Just trying to be busy and, you know, obviously been hanging in the house for like three weeks. So, yeah, just uh, taking it day by day. So. How's that? What have you been doing to pass the time? Grind toast, 100%. Um, obviously, COVID-19 caused me to get laid off. So, um, so yeah, just kind of heads down on grind toast stuff right now. Have you had any symptoms of the, the virus? I have not. All right. Although I've been in the house for three weeks. Like, my the company I was working for was pretty um, progressive, like before it even oh, they like, canned you it, before it really hit Boston. Um, but yeah, then they canned me after two weeks of work. So much for progressive. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, um, I thankfully, and I'm, uh, I'm peeking a little bit. Let's just turn this down one second. I, I'm, I thankfully am, uh, still working. Uh, and it's been interesting because I work as a teacher. So, uh, trying to figure out a way to work with students, you know, during this time, but not like, I don't work for Lynn public school. So, um, that's not like, I, th- there's nothing I can force students to do, but trying to make yeah. some sort of like engagement has been awkward and weird at this time. So it's been, it's been an adjustment period. I've been not that bored because I have like, I just bought a PS4. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. I've been, gamer. I've been also gaming a lot, which I normally am not a gamer, but I know um, I avoid it like her- like for me it's like heroin like I know I would love gaming and yeah, I do same I don't do it you know what I'm saying yeah. I consciously don't do it but I can't help myself it's like dude if we're gonna be locked in for it's gonna be an, at least another month yeah of being locked in so I'm gonna game, I'm gonna game all it. I want so I'm gonna game it up bro I I'm just gonna game it up game five I'm I'm with it I want to go online now I want to play with some oh some we're games. we're doing that. We're gonna be doing that. So, right. so catch me and Edwin on GTA. Yeah, we're probably gonna do right after the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe during the pod, you know. Maybe we'll do a, a Twitch stream. Of, oh, of that, us playing. that sounds fun. That actually sounds yeah. really fun. Um, so in terms of hip hop, we gonna talk about this week. What's what's happening in the streets? We what's were happening. Um, I kind of, I kind of want to start with. What do we want to stuff? New releases? Should we do new releases or should we do? Well, we could we could recap the e party a little bit. Oh, um, we, we've recently course, course. hung out with Wes Taylor, um, and Twain, uh, Khalil Jacobs, names B. Um, it was dope. We had a little Zoom call and we all hung out and listened to the record. So yeah. So if you're if you're unaware, if you've been, uh, I mean, if you're listening to us, then you definitely are not unaware because. Uh, only the truest, truest listen to us, but um, truest Grindhouse fans will know. Yeah, West Taylor released his album West Street this Saturday, and so in celebration of that, we had an album listening party, an e an e album listening party, because we didn't want obviously, um, you know, give anybody viruses by throwing an event. So we we threw an yeah. online event. Um, had a lot and of. We plan on doing amazing. more of them as well. So. That's definitely like keep an eye out for more events like that. Definitely, um, definitely. We have to do something in this time. Yeah, definitely. Um, we want, we want to keep really, things moving. So that was really dope because usually on the podcast we we have one guest on at a time or like maybe yeah. like like have we done two yet? Have we done two people at a time yet? Can't remember. But really? um, yeah, we have we have uh, TJ and and John. Oh yeah um, yeah yeah. That was but, the sidebars. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. That was a side. But um, you know, having on. What is we had like six people on at one time, just kind of like, you know, hanging out, listening to music, and shooting the shit, and like getting a behind the scenes. It, it was very casual and cool. Like, oh man, it was my favorite part was just like like hearing the behind the scenes making of it because I'm a, I'm a fan of that stuff. Yeah, you know, like a how it's made or like what what went into the making of 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 something that you love, and so it was really cool to be a part Definitely of. Definitely like process. how the ca- like how they collaborated and things like that, like. I love that stuff. So oh, yeah. that was cool. Yeah. So shout out to Wes Taylor. Check out West Street. That that was dope. It's a um, dope record. And we're gonna talk about it more in depth. So let's um, let's do it. It's a good it's a good segue into talking about his record and you wanna kick it off? Uh yeah. Um 
I love the record. I think it's really great. Um, a lot of, a couple of the songs, like people have already like heard. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of like, a, it's weird. Cause it's like, there's, it's like catchy songs, but it still has that like raw street style to it. Uh, like, I don't know if you like agree with that, but I just think it like, that, I think that's why I like it so much. It's like, you're getting both, both worlds. Um, and I'm a fan of both things. And also names B is on that record a couple times and dude, they collaborate. It's like perfect. Yeah. He's in, he's in, uh, don't worry, which has become my new favorite track on the album. Uh, it was Four Fingers Too Twisted. Uh, yeah. If you, that's the Four Fingers Too Twisted is the for, uh, the intro of the album. Amazing, just sets the vibe right. It's a very yeah. Cali centric record. Um, yeah, I would I would say Don't Worry is my favorite. But yeah. then like uh, Live by Die by with uh, Khalil Jacobs. Live by Die by that song also is really good. my close second. And like, the thing is. I, we love Gunnetry, but I think because Gunnetry has been up for so long that, like, yeah. that, I think if, if if we hadn't listened to none of the songs on this album and this album came out, I think Gunnetry would be my favorite. I'm not sure. sure. But I think at this point, I've listened to that song, like, over and over and over again that, like, you know, my like the, these songs are fresher. Yeah. So I would say Don't Worry is probably the standout track on that album. Yeah, I mean, I I I think so, too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's great. Um, it's also just like it, he says, like poetry mixed with guns and country, and it like it it really just like puts the whole album like yeah in perspective for you. It's really that. Um, it's very poetic at times. It has a lot of symbolism um, with like deeper meanings, and but then it also has that sort of like like you know like thugging in my white vans and things like that so it's a good mix of of uh sort of maybe lifestyles uh but yeah i like it a lot so yeah man um that uh that we up song is also a really good one name is on that also I, I forgot that one so he's on this he's on this album uh three times white vans yeah. don't uh don't worry and we up and uh I think the world needs more names B. You know I agree. what I'm saying? I one hundred percent more names agree. Like we need more of it. I need more of it. The, the good news Make is it happen. when we talked to him at the eat party, he said he told us that he was working on something. Um yes. and so I think he what, what did he say? He's working on something and so uh he'll we'll be in contact with him soon and we're definitely gonna get him on the pod. Um, but I am excited for more of his stuff. Uh, in terms of the the West Street, overall, I think every and I don't. I'm not just saying this is you know Dick Rodden or anything like that. But overall, this is a seven song album. All seven songs are really good. All seven songs yeah. are really good, and I yeah. really like the the fact that West. I mean, he has that unorthodox rap style, but I feel like with this album compared to his last album, The Sunrise on the West. I think there's been a development or a leveling up of the way he, uh, his unorthodox rap style. I think, I feel like it's, it's becoming more rounded and polished. Um, and the production, yeah. one thing that's constant from Sunrise in the West to this album is that his ear is uh, still phenomenal. He, he definitely got a great ear for music and you can hear that both on his last album and on this one. The, just yeah. the, the production alone and the, the features, everything seems so well placed. The topics and, and um, the aesthetic is perfect. Yeah. Like he's got a great it doesn't ear seem and eye. It, it, yeah, it's just cool. And, um, and I like, obviously like during our talk, he, he would like kind of unpack some of the lyrics um, with him doing that. You kind of got to see like the genius behind like the work and like, it's actually like, you know, he's, he's doing things that are like actually thought out, you know, it's like, yeah. so that, that's definitely like dope to see. I recommend if you guys don't know what I'm talking about still, and you kind of want to get a background, uh, literally it's the last thing we did. Did we give it a podcast number? Yeah, we did. So that's, it's uh 22. So it's check out episode 22. It's the, it's the one right before party for West one. street. What was that? The one right before this one. The one right before this. So check that out. It's real. Yeah, it's really awesome. And it's, it's different. a live one. It's dope. Yeah. 
it's live. Mm-hmm. It's with six people. It's not like just the two of us, like shooting the shit about nothing. It's, it's, it's a really good one. And, and also you just get to, I, my favorite thing, and I hope more people get to do this. Um, my favorite thing is just being able to be in like a, a e room with people and let that creativity come out where everybody's talking about the creative process. That yeah. was a really fun thing to be a part of. Like, yeah, for sure. And also shout out to twin. Um, yeah. just hearing like his, like his background and his, his thoughts and ideas and, 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 you know, how he got connected with, 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 uh, Wes, uh, it's all really cool, man. I love that. The, the fact that there's so that there's a collective there. I don't know if there's a, a distinct, uh, name yet, but there's definitely a collective there between Wes twin, you know, Mike L like all these Lynn centric rappers. I feel like are, are really starting to become one to me. Like they're, like they're yeah. really supportive of each other. That's really cool to see. Yeah, they're very uh, like tribal and like they all kind of like support each other and work with yeah. each other. Yeah, exactly. That's and really honestly, yeah. and none of them sound like alike, and I think that's really fucking yeah, dope. I, I agree. You're, you're getting like a mix of a mixed bag of everything, and um, I think yeah, that's fucking awesome, and I want them to keep going, keep putting stuff out because you know they definitely uh get something good happening. Uh, speaking of uh, people like like local based artists connecting, I wanted to talk about. Um, so there's two people uh, I think we're, we want to review. Did you listen to Sonetta's album yet? Yes, I did. Listen okay. to it today. So let's talk about her next. So let's talk about Vibe Views. So uh, Vibe Views is uh, part of a double uh, EP release by Sonetta Stray. Um, Sonetta Stray, uh, talented singer out of Lynn. She's a singer and she raps. Um, she released Hear Me Out and Vibe Views. It's kind of like a double EP release. And I want to talk, I, I love Hear Me Out, but I wanted, I think Vibe Views, I really want to highlight that because I really, really enjoyed that record. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, we'll just talk about that one. Uh, all, I'm gonna, all I'm going to say on this one, her and Names B should be, a, they should do a collaborative record together. You mean a whole album? Yeah. I could see that. I could That'd see be that. fire. That I would be that. dope. I could definitely see that. Yeah. This a- one, so on this album, um, there's four records. Two of them are with Names B. Yeah. Um, one of them is with Wes. And then the other one's with Louis. So there's some features. And this one, Sonetta only sings. There's no rapping. And Hear Me Out, she, she both sings and raps. So I think that's a really cool uh, like, uh, way of being like versatile, you know, as, as a female yeah, artist, being definitely. able to do a little bit of both. But also putting out this record for just singing and then putting out that record to kind of be more versatile with. I respect that. I really like this record because I really, really, really like her as a singer. Um, and names be, yeah. I, I told you we need more of him. And he's, he's very like, he's like that John legend. I feel like he's like, he reminds yeah. me of like that John legend type of like soul. Oh, know? for real. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, there was, what was the track that I really like? I think it was, um, highest degree. Highest degree is good. Highest degree. Um, I think is my favorite. Yeah. I think honestly, I think that was my favorite as well. Um, But uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, check out check out Vibe Views uh, by Sonetta Stray. Check out Names B. Check out um, both albums, both EPs. But definitely, definitely, definitely check out Vibe Views. It's really good. I haven't heard. I think my um, the hard the hard the hardest thing to find locally. I think and and if you guys know of any good people, definitely. I think our area is singers. Ah, you took the words right out of my mouth, you thief. Yes, singers. Well, no, because I think that too. Like, Want to talk more about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Like, there's just not a lot of like R and B happening here. Everybody's a rapper. And names B, names B is technically from Florida, so we, yeah, you know, we've been He's blessed. From here. Yeah, like a gift. It's same thing with West. West is from Cali, so we've been blessed with these outside artists mm-hmm. who come here and bless us with the yeah. skills. But I think you know what I've you know noticed is is the best absolute best singers at some point they were like in a church choir. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, names B. He mentioned that he was yeah. uh, in our our uh, live episode. Um, Seems like the most you can definitely player. tell. I mean, he's definitely like trained singer. Like he's yeah. 
And I want to I want to ask Sonetta this also. So uh, I think we've been talking to Sonetta. She's going to be on the podcast soon. So we'll, we're going to talk to her more about Hear Me Out and Vibe Views um, and get just her perspective. But I'm also sure she was also – I think she was also a, a, a choir singer. But we'll, we'll find out more. Maybe, about yeah, we'll find that out. We'll yeah. definitely ask. But it's, it's definitely a... – I think if I was an A and R man, I would just be hanging out at like churches. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'd be rolling Find up in churches. <laughs> hey man, you, you you might give some people some ideas. So it just, seriously, all my favorite singers at some point, like they, that's what they did. They, you know, you know, the best ones at some point, the the most soulful ones, they were church singers. There's definitely yeah. something to that. But maybe, I don't know, maybe Massachusetts or Lynn, like, we don't really do that. I don't know. I don't know what the – I don't know why we can't find those soulful, beautiful singers as much out here than, uh, I feel like, like, in the South or, or yeah, somewhere Yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe because, maybe like, religion is not as, like, strong here than maybe in the South. I think you're right. That has to be it. I, that has I, to be it. May, maybe. I don't even know. That's speculation. I don't really know, but, you know. If somebody knows the answer, could you tell us? Yeah. I'm trying to figure know. it out myself. Let us know. Um, so let's move on to Joyner, our boy. Our boy Joyner. Our boy Joyner. So Joyner dropped what I would say is video of the year. Another one. That video is dope. I Honestly, I think the the record is great. It's like fucking 18 songs, and they're all really good songs. I, I disagree. I think uh, two songs are good. The rest are dog shit. Really? Uh, sorry, Joyner. Uh, sorry. But um, what, I would what, say, just real quick, before I start getting to the negatives, just real quick, I want, just want to say about Will, that song, it hits different when you don't have a dad. <laughs> just, like, just, yeah. like, just letting you know. That song hit a little different when you didn't grow up without a, with a father, you know? Like, so I was definitely, when he put that song, because I, I agree, I'm with him. That's how I grew up. That's the father I had when I was growing up. Is I had uh, Uncle Phil and the yeah. Fresh Prince. You know, like I was watching that. That was that was my fatherhood. You know, watching sitcom dads do their shit because I had no dad. So it's like that song when he put that song out, that hit different. I yeah. was definitely like a little like I didn't cry or shed a tear or anything, but I was definitely my. Yeah, it, you know, it hit a it hit a you know a chord. Struck you know? a chord. Struck yeah. a chord. So yeah. I feel obviously I feel a little bit different about that song than maybe a lot of people do, but I really do feel like it's. It's it's music video of the year. Um, I wouldn't go as, as far as saying it's a song of the year, but it's definitely music video of the year, and it definitely like made me feel something in my cold heart. So, you know. I mean, my thing is like that he made a, he made a, a record. It is a very mainstream record, but I find myself not skipping the songs and liking them. It's generally like. See, that's the thing I didn't like about the album. If you listen to his last album, um, uh, the one that he put his phone number on. Um, yeah. and, okay, also, I hate the fact that he's, he's calling this his first album. It's not your first album. It's your first mainstream album. I get that. But yeah. don't roll it out as your first album because that's not fucking true. Like, that is not at all true. It's not your first album. You released did many he, albums. Did he put out this record or did, like, the label? No, he put it out himself. It's just his first like mainstream like everybody knows who I am now album. What so happened called, to his record deal? Then he, he gets got out of it with Atlantic. Huh. He got out of it with Atlantic, yeah. Um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How, how did he magic. manage that? I don't know. He worked his magic because if I was in Atlantic, I'd be like, yeah. hell no. You're making us mad money here, with buddy. these videos. <laughs> like and once a year you win a Grammy for a music video, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. Like his music good, videos are insane. Good, good for him to getting out of it. I don't like the album, and I don't like. Oh, I don't like the rollout first because it's just disingenuous. You're you're doing it because it makes you seem like uh, like you're reaching number one off like off the first album you release, which is not true. I don't think that's a fair thing to say because if somebody actually like didn't release a record, and then like when Cardi released her album. And I, I get that at, after a certain point, it was all label shit. And I get, so I, it, it's even saying that is, is, is kind of wrong, but yeah. it's not your first album. So to, to say it's your first album and like to, to, to like, after whatever success you get from it to say like my first album, I got all the success from it. That's not, it's just not true. I'd rather have them just be straightforward and be like, yo, I took, it took me so many albums to get to this point where I get to release this album to the world. 
you know, just be genuine about it. So I really didn't like that as a rollout, calling it the first album when it clearly wasn't. And if you looked on Spotify, you'd be able to tell. But um, yeah, in terms of the music, like I said, dude, two songs are really good. Devil's Work and Will. Those yeah. are my two favorite songs on the album. Everything else was okay. I, I think, I, what did I say? It was trash. I was trying to shock you there a little bit. Shock, shock. It was okay. Most of the songs are okay, I but I why yeah, I, mean, I hated I don't think it. It's trash, but why I hated it is because I can tell. I feel like he's not Joiner. It's I feel like he, it's him trying to be a bunch of different people and trying to get into the little niches of all rap uh, of genres. I feel like that's what he was doing. He was trying to just jump into niches of rap genres. It, so I don't it know. wasn't authentic. I feel like it. it obviously, Logic's on the record, but it, it felt like a like a Logic record to me. Like it played like a, a logic record. Yeah. And then he had that and then he had that one sometimes I feel like ADHD. I'm I'm dying on the inside. Like that like that little Uzi Vert or like uh Emo a juice world type type, type, type stuff yeah. type thing. It's like it just seemed like he was like he was taking a page out of logic's books. But logic, that's my a big downside with logic is I think he just like apes a lot of other rappers and well he and, spreads himself too thin where it's like Yeah. Like, like I'm gonna he, try to do everything, yeah. and it's like he's like a rap savant, so he feels like he can just turn into a chameleon and just emulate other rappers. I don't like that Joyner Lucas is taking that page out of out of uh, Logic's book because I think yeah. Joyner is creative enough as it is that he doesn't have to borrow anybody's sound, even if it's gonna get him a number one. And that's what I felt yeah. like with this record. I felt like he was chasing a number one by turning into a chameleon and em- em- emulating other people's sound and trying to make it sound better. But it doesn't seem as authentic because it, it, it just it sounds like you trying to go for a hit record as opposed to you really kind of putting out a body of work that's like more genuine or personal. I don't know. I really liked his last album, the one with his phone number. This one, I thought it was it was it was uh, it, it, for a guy that didn't release his music without a record label. It sounded like a record label put this out. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, it it, it was probably like. Like he probably used like a major distributor to do it. I I don't really obviously I don't know the like logistics of what he did, but like yeah, there's definitely like some money behind that, and that's how it got to be that sound. Um, but um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. All right, moving on. So um, over, I mean, I guess before we move on, um, overall, give the album. If I was to rate it, I'd give it a C. Did you say what your favorite song was? It it will 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 okay. And then Devil's Work is really good, also. Okay. What about you? I like that song Revenge. It's kind of trappy. Um, but he still kind of sticks to like his rapping style on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would say revenge is good. You want to talk about Takashi? Yeah, I'm getting like mixed. Like, like I saw some posts like saying that he got out, and then for article wise i haven't seen any articles that right, say right, so you wanna, officially you wanna, got out you want to summarize what were, were you talking about cuz people don't have context yeah i'm context te- texting that now um so yeah th- uh, there was an article saying that um there was a judge i or a prosecutor or some someone um a federal judge uh to order uh takashi 69 to be released early from a two year sentence Due to coronavirus pandemic, um, if uh, the judge has authority, um, is willing to do that. So, um, but then I I saw like memes like posted saying that he got released. So I just think it's people not <laughs> you, 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 not reading you the articles. The source, bro. Well, no. Yeah. Th- um, let me finish. <laughs> uh, I think that's why people like they don't read the fucking articles. Like that's not what it said. It said that there was a judge willing gotcha. to, to let him out. So just judging off the article, not the meme, it seems like he's going to get out soon is, is what that's pretty much saying. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did Based on the when? article. Based did on it say the... when? Um, 
soon, as soon as possible. As as long as the judge signs off, he can leave as soon as tomorrow. Yeah, the uh, judge is fine with it. I think the that judge seems, just wants to make sure it's okay. That just seems to me like he ratted out whoever, <laughs> whoever he needs to rat out to get the hell out of there. Yeah. How do you have that much preferential treatment? Yeah. That like, bro. He, he's in like a private prison too. He's not like in like a federal prison. He's in, he's in the blue collar prison, like white or, collar. I mean, oh yeah, one hundred percent. With like Wall Street, like stockbrokers yeah. and shit. Yeah. So um, that's all I got on that, but um definitely interested in, in seeing what happens. So I, yeah, I think I I we already talked about what we think is gonna happen to him, so I won't go down that path. Yeah. Uh, I mean I just honestly I just like for him, if he got out right now, this would be the best thing for him because no one's outside right now. Like nobody's outside. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, he just better not go to his mom's house. Yeah, yeah. For multiple reasons. Yeah. If it's not true. the virus, it's the bullets from the drive bys. Yeah. So just don't visit, visit your mom anytime soon. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Well, congrats to Stakashi for possibly getting out even earlier than expected. Yeah, I mean, Edwin's a stan, so a Takashi stan. He loves it. I respect, I respect his hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, that's I'm fucked. Kidding, I don't. Um, um, yeah. Do you, do you want to move on to some other stuff? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what else we got on the docket? Uh, let's talk about the DJ sets. Let's talk about the DJ sets. Have you seen any? Yeah, first? My first question is, have it. you seen any? Because... Cause, because I feel like you haven't. I've seen a couple, like, I kind of, like, watch a little bit. I, I'm not sitting there all night listening to it. Um, I D-Nice, I, you know, if he goes live. Man, Manny Fresh and Scott Storch tonight. D-Nice. That what? should be good. Yeah. Are you, I feel like, oh, you're delayed, aren't you? Uh, you're delayed. I'm delayed. Yeah, you're good now. Oh, no wonder you've been cutting me off a bunch. Um, um, what was I saying? Man, yeah, Manny Fresh and and D Nice tonight at nine o'clock. Yeah, I mean D Nice. I feel like every night. I'm sorry. What am I spinning? Stop, man. <laughs> Not D Nice. Yeah, I'm sorry. Man, D Nice is doing his own shit. D Nice started I th- this. Yeah, I I, I, I kind of figure what you're saying. Scott okay. Storch and Manny Fresh tonight. Is what I'm yeah. saying. I'm excited about that because I was listening to Manny Fresh's set the other night, and I love people say th- th- there's no chance Manny Fresh is gonna win because Scott Storch has like super hits upon super hits upon super hits, and yeah. I agree with that. I'm still excited about it because I was listening to Manny Fresh's DJ set the mm-hmm. other night because he was doing yeah. a, just a solo live one the other night. It was great. It was great because it's 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 so it's a different sound than what I'm used to hearing all the time because it's so New Orleans bounce based. Um, that it's just a different vibe. So I'm enjoy. I want to see what he does. I want to see what he does. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That yeah, I'm definitely gonna check that one out. Um, it's on Instagram, right? Yeah, Instagram. Okay. And, cool. and then the, I didn't. I I'm still trying to catch up on this one. The boy wonder. Um, uh, Sean uh Sean Garrett one. I yeah. heard was really good. Oh no, that was the dream in Sean Garrett. And then it was yeah. boy wonder and hip boy. They did one. Um. And then Timbaland and Swiss, that one was crazy. I caught that yeah, one. Yeah, I caught some of that one. That one was cool. Um, yeah, man. So, yeah, if you're on Instagram, the best thing you can do for yourself right now is follow producers because they are having producer battles left and right every yeah. other night. It's so great. Who, so like, great who would have thought part. we were going to go this route? <laughs> like, I didn't know like this was going to be a massive thing. Um, I'm, I'm glad they're doing it. I'm, 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 I'm all about it. I'm glad D Nice started the trend of, of DJing live on Instagram. Or not not yeah. that he started the trend, but like, you know, started the quarantine trend. Like he was the first one to kind of like do it and like make it popular. Yeah. Um and I'm well, glad now that, you got like, Tory Lane's doing and, his and, thing. Yeah, Tory Lane's with quarantine radio. <laughs> I haven't I haven't been in tune with that as much because to be honest with you, I, I kind of find Tory Lane's to be a little like like pompous. So, oh, so yeah. I don't know if I can listen yeah. to too much of quarantine radio. Listen to Tory Lane scream into a microphone. 
I mean, I don't know. It's it's supposed to be like funny and ridiculous. I think. Have you have you listened to it? Give me the rundown. I I haven't. He had like Drake on the other night, and it like it was the most like people seeing a live stream. Like I think they broke a record um, by like one hundred fifty thousand people. So I think in total they had three hundred thousand people watching. Do you get? Do they get a check off of that? Probably not. Damn, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? If I got three hundred thousand people in my live stream, <laughs> I'd be figuring a way to monetize off of that. I'll be honest. Yeah, get some a lot of people for shit. a live stream. Yeah, uh, we we wouldn't we can't even we don't even we can't even dream of like three thousand, let alone three hundred three hundred thousand. Um, yeah, man. But the DJ battles, the 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 quarantine concerts have been fun. I saw Shaq's quarantine concert oh, yeah I, I, I did see that, that. yeah that was, that was pretty I, fun <laughs> yo was it just was it me or was that Shaq that first saw dude Shaq was going in I was kind of fucking with Shaq in, in his raps dude I I was like damn okay Shaq like it, it, I was like I would it took me by surprise at first I thought he was freestyling I thought it was gonna be whack and after I was like yeah. he's definitely not freestyle he wrote this first of all but this show is kind of dope I can't tell I just is there of, is there anything that like Shaq can't do like that dude does like literally everything, and he does it pretty well. <laughs> like, like it's crazy. But, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't man. know. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with Shaq's Shaq's ability to be an everyman. Yeah, he's he's literally an everyman. He's yeah, proud with people going crazy man. at festivals. He's throwing his own festivals. He's DJing. His family looks like they love him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's like he's literally the most lovable human being on earth. I think. Yeah. Um, I agree. All right, who's next? Let's talk about. All right, let's go into this. Uh, this these segments that we we talked we talked about. Do you mind talking about the the Joe Budden podcast taking a break? I think, I, and I've thought about it longer. I think it's just April Fool's joke. You think so? Yeah, I think it's an April Fool's joke. I don't think it is. Are you sure? Why? I really don't think it, it is. doesn't make any sense, dude. We we're doing a podcast right now. Yeah, but like remotely, maybe they, maybe, like they're very like, like, like Joe is very methodical, and I, I don't think he wants to do it remotely. I, I think I don't. I think that if it comes between a man and his money, as Joe is getting paid by Spotify to put out episodes of shit, and every episode does like goes diamond pretty much. I think in an age where potting from home is not even, dude, we're doing it. We're nobody. Uh, trust me. I know. Barely I, anybody who listens to our shit yeah. and we're doing it. So there's no excuse why Joe shouldn't do it. There's zero excuse. Absolutely none. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, I don't it, know. It I just be think the same because they're not in the same room. We get that. Yeah. But it literally doesn't take much to do a podcast from home. Just give everybody a mic, have them get everybody's zooms, connect it to the computer. Boom. You got a podcast going. And then use what it's not. It's it's dude. I know. I mean, hard. obviously, I know because we're di- we're doing it. Yeah, um, well, that's what I'm saying. We're doing it. But it's just so, like, and we're not even getting paid for this. So why would yeah. Joe take an extended time off due to coronavirus when nobody's doing anything but sitting around at home and he has the equipment to be able to do it? It doesn't make any sense to me. I dude, trust me. I know. I I don't think they should stop doing it. But I could just I I can just definitely see. Them being like, oh, it's not in the same room. Like we don't want to do it. So it's April I get Fools. It. I think it's we'll we'll find out Saturday. We'll see. We'll find out we'll, Saturday. We'll find if, out. If there's no pod on Saturday, then he's then you're right. If there's a pod on Saturday, then I'm right. But I definitely do think it's an April Fool's prank. Like it's Joe. <laughs> I can't trust the word that comes out of his mouth. It's Joe. I don't know, man. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, give me your guilty pleasure of the week. So this new new segment we're gonna try guilty to do pleasure. or do every now and then. We're gonna talk about a few things. Guilty yeah. pleasures being one of them. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, Gashi, uh song is greatness. Who's that? Um, he's like, I think uh, Rock Nation signed them. Um, but he makes like sort of like, like, it's like sort of electronic like production and then it's kind of like post ish type stuff 
I think I think I may have heard him before, but I, I haven't yeah. really kind of given him a deep listen. I wouldn't even say he's a guilty pleasure. Like I don't think he's like corny or anything. So so you couldn't find a, a guilty pleasure? You don't have a guilty not, pleasure? Not really, because I'm pretty open about like I listen to a lot of different stuff. Well, I have a guilty pleasure. And I think I think maybe the way you describe a guilty pleasure and the way I describe a guilty pleasure is probably different. Because I, I fuck so my guilty pleasure is Max B phenomenon. I love that song. Um and it's my guilty pleasure because I don't think it's a good song. Like like musically, I don't think <laughs> it shouldn't be a good song, but it is. It just <laughs> is. Like okay. th- that's what I'm like I like that's fine. first when I like the first song first came out, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? And then like yeah. I just started grooving to it like 15 seconds afterwards like all right okay i get i get, I get this but uh it's definitely not a song that you're like you would think is is good at all but it is it like let it sit for 30 seconds and you'll be loving it believe me like it's just like the the strumming of the the guitar and then like there's just something about max b's uh, like He's like very thug, like dipset y kind of type of dude, but then like I don't know, the whole like <laughs> make a song like this, and it's just like it's just his his brain is I'm not sure where it is, but it's interesting. Uh yeah. uh so anyway, I've been really, really digging that song and it's super catchy. Yeah, I I get you. Um actually I'm trying to think of the song and I can't think of it. <laughs> so but I'll have to check it out. All right. Give me your hard record of the week. Uh, so mine is by Conway the Machine. The song is called Calvin. He has a new video out. Um, and the video is fucking dope. I um, seen it a lot. Yeah. I seen it a lot. I see what you did there. That was nice. Um, yeah, it's just like one of those like it just makes you want to like crush like the skulls of your enemies, man. It's just a fucking dope record. Honestly, the whole record. Uh, Lulu is the record. Um, Alchemist uh, produced the whole record. It's fucking awesome. I haven't. Uh, I haven't gotten an opportunity to listen to the whole record through, uh, but I have. That has been on replay for the past couple days. Um, for my for my hard record of the week, so if you follow Cousin Stiz on Insta on uh, twi- Twitter, um, there was a snippet circulating around um, from a song called Vendetta, and it was just like a snippet of some dude like dancing crazy in the middle of the street, yeah. to, like this Cousin Stiz song, and I thought it was just the dopest shit, just because like it's like it, that guy was in his vibe, <laughs> and the song is a, definitely a very like mellow vibe type of song, and this guy's kind of like spazzing out dancing. And it was just something about that that really kind of like caught my eye. And then I listened to it. I was like, dude, this snippet goes hard. And so I listened to the snippet over and over and over and over and over again. And then a couple of days ago, he finally released a full song. And so I would say Cousin Stiz Vendetta is the hard record of the week for me. Yeah. Okay. It's a good song. I did listen to it. Um, yeah, I think Conway's, it, he had that video with it. It was just all around just like dope. So. Definitely check that out if you can. All right. Is there any last things that we want to talk about before we close it out? Uh, we have a bunch of new merch that we can. Ah, the merch. Yeah. Show that show that thing off. It's embroidered. This one is. You should buy it, people. Buy the merch. Buy the merch. So, yeah, we're getting new merch in. Um, we what we got we got hats grab the mic hat yeah a couple of grindhouse hoodies what else we got that and like a shirt and stuff um you Shirts. know beanie all that shit so you need to start making like like boxers and panties and like maybe yeah know, toilet paper <laughs> yeah we need to start like just putting our name on everything dude just slap it on everything it'll be fine uh but yeah do check out the grindhouse uh store um and if you like this video uh like comment and subscribe uh i gotta think of a new thing to say because i'm also like tell your friends about the podcast you know yeah that's what i mean you have a friend that likes hip-hop tell your friend about it 
That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Fuck the, the like, comment. Like, comment, and subscribe is pretty much an extension of like, tell people about us if you like our shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, just to spread the love. So if, if you if you really yeah. dig what we're doing here, then 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 share us, share us with people. You know, let the people um, know. Let the people know. So yeah, we'll we'll be back soon with another episode of the podcast. I think next time around we may have a special guest. Yeah, um, it'll be virtually, obviously. Yeah, it'll be virtual. It may be while. virtual for a while too. I don't. We yeah. don't really know. I mean, everybody doesn't really know, so I, I feel like I don't have to say anything because people can assume that until this Corona thing is figured out, like nobody's going anywhere. Um, yeah. So just expect more of these. Po- <laughs> Dude, every it seems like we like when we get used to a location, we just switch it up. Now, yeah, you know, we were just getting comfy yeah. in the studio, and now we got a friggin' pod from the room now. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, we're going to be here for a while until the Corona thing clears out and we're, you know, we can do the podcast without worrying about dying. Uh, but for right now it's going to be like this. So our next guest will be on virtually. Um, <clears throat> if the quality sucks, let us know. We definitely want to hear back about that. If yeah. it does suck. We're um, but we first got, time doing this. So. Yeah. First time doing this. Uh, not really. We did this on Friday, I guess. So that, that was, our yeah, I, but it was a different platform that we used. Um, rather, yeah. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, man. So uh, see you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Don't touch anyone. Don't wash your hands. Mother. Um, yeah, don't see your parents. Yeah, just, just face don't do them. it. FaceTime yeah. them. Let Give them, them a see call. Your beautiful face, but definitely do not let them touch your face. Yeah. All right, y'all. All right, peace. Take care.